I wanted uh, to become a midwife for uh, the experience that the mother, the expectant mothers go through labor and they deliver happily, they deliver a life baby and they go home happy. I just wanted to be through that experience and help more women deliver life babies going home happy. I'm a midwife and I work at Gynokia Women's Hospital and Petitula Center. Working at Gaino Care Clinic is it's good. It's a place for hope for women. Kandi is one of our staff here. Kilo one of the reliable staff here. She has worked in the department, maternity department for a long time. She has experience in terms of um, care of our pregnant mother in labor and observing a mother until she gives birth. Whenever she's working, I, I don't have any doubts about her uh, uh, effectiveness actually in terms of patient monitoring in labor and subsequent decision making in terms of the progress of this patient. Obstructed labor is a, a, a situation whereby a mother is in labor and um, are in the process of the head of the baby uh, descending to the pelvic region, it gets stuck there. So once it's stuck in there, it cannot descend, it cannot move anywhere. And that's what we call obstructed labor. Obstructed labor can be caused by a number of things. There can be what we call malpresentation, whereby the baby is not presenting with the head as it's normally, it's normal. It presents with the shoulder, which has a large diameter so that the baby cannot pass through the birth canal. We have a big baby. A big baby is when the baby is big, has a large diameter that cannot pass through the birth canal. It can take hours or days, and if a doctor is not available, then the baby dies. Subsequently, the mother gets a fistula. What happens, uh, the head of the baby sticks in the peripheral region, compressing the bladder, compressing the rectum. At the end of the day, uh, blood supply is cut off, so the patient gets out. Uh, tissue damage around the bladder area and the rectum area. The consequences, two, three, four days later, patient is leaking urine and stool. So basically, uh, the baby is not able to pass, so it sticks in there for days and days, and that's what causes obst obstetric uh, fistula. A person with fistula, she'll have urine incontinence, urine will just be coming out uncontrollably, or she, she'll get stool incontinence, whereby stool will be coming through the vagina all the times. Most of the time, actually, our such labor can be uh, diagnosed through what they call a pathogram. It's a chart which uh, shows the status of the mother, the status of the baby, the contractions, the drugs that are being given during that point. So at one stage, the pathogram can show that uh, this baby is not, uh, the, the progress is not good, and a diagnosis of obstructed labor can be made. My role as a midwife is to, inf when I suspect that there is an obstructed labor, First thing, what I have to do, I'll have to inform the obstetrician that I'm suspecting an obstructed labor. How are you, Nelly? Okay. How are you doing today? Okay. When a mother comes, you take the history. The mother will give you the uh, last monthly period. From the monthly period, you calculate when she expected to get the delivery. There are chances that young mothers can develop obstructed labor because they are not fully mature and they are still growing. So most young mothers are proper candidates for obstructed labor. But you can't rule out to all young mothers that they'll get obstructed labor. That's why we do assessment. Okay, you attended all the clinics, eh? And today you are, uh, shows you are term and when did the pain start if you get the history and you know that she's on that period whereby she can achieve a delivery then you'll ask her if she has had any pains the pains are the contractions you have to rule out if it is a true labor or false labor 
true labor starts well, it starts with good contraction which are increasing the pains are increasing and it increases with time that's a sign that you know this is true labor yeah. ah. okay. when you're assessing a mother uh, who is in labor you have to have three indicators in mind the powers the passage and the passenger power is the good uterine contractions we have the passage we should open up normally and we have the passenger the passenger is the baby to be born okay you you still continue palpating on the back of the baby and the size of the baby also the length of the baby and the size of the abdomen while you want to check for the descent of the baby's head you can do it abdominally while you feel for the baby's head on the tummy, you feel the baby's head, whether it has engaged, that is going in or it's still up. You'll feel if it's balloting when the free movements of the baby's head, it means it has not gone in. You also feel, you measure by your fingers. You feel if it's five up, all your fingers will be five up. You do another examination as labor is progressing, you assess. If it's still five up and there are good uterine contractions, you know something is not going well because the baby has not gone into the pelvic cavity. So Nelly, follow your knees, we want to do uh, some pelvic examination, pelvic assessment for you, okay. To see if your bones are okay, your pelvic cavity will enable you to deliver normally, okay. When you let the mother lie on the back, it will allow you to do a good examination as per the position of the pelvis. We begin by doing a vaginal examination. Vaginal examination is when you put the fingers into the birth canal. You go in to assess the passage whereby the baby will pass by during the delivery. You feel how the suffix is, if it's adequate. Adequacy of the suffix means if it is soft, if it is tight, if it is long, if it is thin or thick. Then when you come out to the fingers, you assess the bones of the pelvis. If they are sharp, if they are contracted, you feel with the fingers, you feel the prominence. There are bones which are sharp, those are the prominence. You feel the diameters, you assess the diameters if they are adequate then you come out of the birth canal. Let's hope everything will be well. Eh? We'll monitor you through we achieve the delivery, okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Our second admission, Dorothy, in the labor room. She's been laboring for the past few days in her rural home, and now she's come to a facility. We're suspecting that she's having obstructed labor, but I'm going to do a final examination. Then we'll inform the surgeon. A patrogram is like a checklist that you use to monitor each and every step you are doing to a mother in labor so as you can detect any problem early. Just get out of the bed slowly before another contraction gets you. Just wear your sandals. I'm going to take your BP again. Take the fetal heart rate. She's getting good contractions. She's also having uh, excessive molding. Found it during my vaginal examination that the baby's head is being pressed and it's not coming down because maybe there, there can be signs of obstruction. Uh, the fetal heart of the baby is good. The amniotic fluid color is of green, which we suspect the baby might be having problem too. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to inform the surgeon. Most of the time we don't want to reach obstructed labor when a patient is in labor. But if a patient walks in from home and obstructed labor is, a diagnosis of obstructed labor is made, then the whole team is actually more paralyzed from the lab, from the nursing staff, from the doctor's side, and the patient is prepared for operation immediately. An antibody can be given just to prevent a possibility of an infection because prolonged labor, frequent examinations on that patient, she might have an infection. But the number one thing that needs to be done at that point is actually relieve the obstruction uh, because it's a mechanical thing. The most important thing is to relieve that obstruction. And the main reason, of course, the baby cannot pass.
you just feel like you are in the shoes of the patient. You just feel, oh, I'm going for surgery. But what I, as a midwife, I'll feel for the patient, but I'll reassure her to take it more positive and we think we are saving her situation so that she doesn't develop any problem. Okay, congratulations, Dorothy. Here is your baby, okay? Yes, so it feels great when you save a situation whereby you get a life outcome of the baby. You've prevented complication to the mother. You feel you're getting self-esteem, you're proud of your job, and you're happy.